A president said, fuck Nancy Pelosi, I'm not fucking leaving. The top 10 most embarrassing moments at the DNC tonight. Number 10, Jen Psaki inadvertently drops a joke on herself. Just watching tonight, the diversity of the faces, the youth in the room, yeah. the diversity of people's backgrounds is so striking and different from a couple of weeks ago. And what's also different is the overall message. I mean, Biden and Harris are speaking to the totality of the country, the multicultural, multi-ethnic country we live in that's diverse with a big umbrella and everybody who's a part of it. And Trump and Vance speak to a tiny, tiny portion of the public. And that's a striking thing. You look at the room, but I think also in the messages we'll hear. Number nine, Republican Scott Jennings exposes the truth about Biden's exit on CNN. This, this is his moment tonight. This is his moment. Yeah. yeah, Biden is known in his career as being one of the best eulogy givers at funerals. And now they're making him come and give his own career. He, he has files of every eulogy. Yeah, he's, he's and, and now they're making him give his own eulogy at this uh, convention. I mean, you have to give one. It's best that you get to give your own. <laughs> yeah, I guess. I, I, I am anxious to see how they handle it. It's a sticky wicket. I mean, he was bullied out of this race after 52 years of service to the Democratic Party. And it wasn't all about his age. He was unpopular. He was going to lose. It was Afghanistan. It was inflation. It was immigration. And now, uh, and he had to be dragged out by the fingernails. I'm sorry, this is not, so, he's not here in a happy moment, okay? I know that this, this yarn that's being spun in this hall that he was popular and selfless and handing on, no, 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 it is the opposite. And everybody knows it. And yet the Democrats are engaging in this this theater of looking into cameras and saying it, so it's not. Number eight, Joe Biden battles the teleprompter and loses. In his decision over turning Roe v. Wade, as you heard earlier tonight, the United States Supreme Court majority wrote the following, quote, women are not without electrical, not, not allowed, not without electoral, electoral or political power. No kidding. MAGA Republicans found out the power of women in 2022. And Donald Trump is going to find out the power of women in 2024. Number seven, Michigan Governor Gretchen Whitmer accidentally emasculates Tim Waltz on MSNBC. Love Tim Wall. So Tim, my daughters were saying to me, you know, he's he's like a male version of you, Mom. <laughs> and I thought that was so Minus funny. Minus the red lip, I can see it. Minus, but he's rocking a purple tie in honor of the Vikings and Prince. So like he's always on message. Number six, Jill Biden says she watched Joe dig deep into his soul and decide to no longer seek re-election when he was actually pushed out by the Democrat Party. And weeks ago. When I saw him dig deep into his soul and decide to no longer seek re-election and endorse Kamala Harris. Number five, AOC receives a standing ovation for saying a whole lot of nothing. Knock on our neighbor's door, organize our communities, and elect Kamala Harris to the presidency on November 5th. We will send a loud message that the people of this nation will not go back. We choose a new path and open the door to a new day, one that is for the people and by the people. Thank you. Thank you very much. God bless. God bless you all. Number four. Democrat Senator Chris Coons tries starting a We Love Joe chant, and it's as pathetic as you would expect. Thank you, Joe, and God bless you. We love you. We love Joe. We love Joe. We love Joe. We love Joe. Thank you all. We love Joe. God bless you, and thank you very much. Number three. 
Joe Biden says with a straight face, we finally beat Big Pharma after mandating government paid Rona shots for millions of Americans. Getting in a fight for 50 years to give Medicare the power to negotiate low prescription drug prices, we finally beat Big Pharma. Number two, Michigan Senator Mallory McMorrow says that Trump could even weaponize the Department of Justice to go after his political opponents, when that's exactly what Kamala Harris and the Democrats have done to President Trump. Donald Trump would be able to weaponize the Department of Justice to go after his political opponents. He could even turn the FBI into his own personal police force. That is not how it works in America. That's how it works in dictatorships. Number one, Jake Tapper crushes Joe Biden on live TV and he doesn't even realize it. You should know that one of what one of the dynamics that is going on, and this is going to be a night, obviously, uh, where there is a, an, an homage uh, to President Biden. We just heard Vice President Harris talk yeah. about thanking him and how important he has been to this country and to this party. But one of the issues is that for the last year, as people geared up for the 2024 race, uh, the candidates were in the minds of Democrats. One, one candidate, the Republican, who would come out and offend them, and the other candidate, their candidate, the Democrat, Joe Biden, who would come out and they would sit on the edge of their seat and hope that he didn't say something meandering or off message or addled. And that fear about their nominee speaking is gone. Now they have somebody who, uh, I mean, it is does project joy. They're, they're not particularly subtle about how they want the message of this convention to be joy, but it, she does project joy with a with a with her smile and her tone and her mien. And she's not somebody that, uh, in a situation like this, is going to cause Democrats that tension that we used to feel uh, in the media and uh, all Americans when the president would come out and speak. Yeah.